Hello everyone, my name is Prote Silaos, also known as Prot. In this video I want to talk to you about the built-in mechanism that Emacs has for narrowing down the list of selection candidates. The program is called Interactively Do, and this is abbreviated in one word as IDO or IDO or IDO or something to that effect. I call it IDO. So what I want to do in this video is show you some of the main features of IDO and how you can use them in their appropriate uh, context. Just to say that what I'm about to showcase uh, will, uh, may differ a bit from what you have on your end and this is because of the various tweaks and customizations that I have introduced. Uh, so for this reason I will link to my uh, .emacs, I will link to it in the description, my init file, so you can find these and of course all the rest and uh, copy them as you will. So let me toggle screen key, now you can see my input, let's start with the demo. So IDO, once you enable IDO mode, it will power up all the interfaces that Emacs has for uh, navigating the file system, switching buffers, searching for help using the mini buffer. Let's see it in practice. Control X, Control F. This is uh, the command that allows you to search uh, for, to find the file and open it in a buffer. And what we have here is a list of all the available options. This is what we call the list of candidates. And you can narrow down the list, you can narrow the list of candidates by typing in uh, some characters. So if I type MO, for example, it will narrow down to the items that contain the prefix MO. And then once you uh, confirm your uh, search, you press the return key and it will perform the appropriate action. In this case, it will open the file uh, that you have selected. Those were my Emacs themes, by the way. Uh, so yeah, let's come back here. Um, by default, uh, IDO will only match, when you type in characters, will only match items that contain the given prefix. So these characters next to each other, they must be next to each other. But there is a variable which I have enabled, which allows for flexible matching. So I want to show it to you in practice and then explain it how it works. You see this file over here, emacs-init.el. Let's move to it as fast as we can. E, I, E. And you see that I have uh, come right to it. So what is flexible matching? IDO by default will only search for a prefix. It will only search for characters that are next to each other. But if it cannot find uh, characters that are next to each other, the, the, that are not adjacent, it will then search for items that contain the characters that you have typed in the given sequence. So it will search for things that contain E, then I, then E again, even though they may not be right next to each other. For example, this thing here is E, then I is over here, and then E is down there. But it is matching it. Very nice. So you can cycle now other things you can do. You can cycle the list of uh, candidates the same way you would cycle things in iSearch. Control S and Control R. Or, in this case, you can use the arrow keys. Very nice. Okay, next up. Uh, let's uh, use Control XD. This is the command that allows you to move to a directory. And let's search for something. Let's come here. Let's search for something else. Let's come here. When you see a dot, in this case, this is the only thing you have, it means to move to the directory at point. Let's let's come here, you can see the dot over here, move to the directory at the point. And if you hit the return key, it will produce a buffer with uh, a directory editor, a diared buffer with the contents of this directory. By the way, check my backlog because I have a series of videos on diared. This is a very powerful file manager and you should know uh, as much about it as you possibly can. It is extremely useful. Okay, but let's delete this and let's continue with our demo. Control XD. Let's come here again and let's move, let's say, let's move somewhere deep in the file system. And now let's say that I am here and I want, you see the file system path. This is the tilde, the first uh, thing over there, is the character that is an alias for your home directory. So this is my home directory, then .emacs.d, elpa, etc, etc. Now let's say that I want to move to my home directory as fast as possible without having to delete, without having to think too much about it. I press tilde and then forward slash. And this brings me di directly to uh, my home directory. Very nice indeed. 
In a similar fashion, you can move to the root of your file system by pressing forward slash twice. I am on GNU Linux, so what you are seeing here, I am on Debian, so what you are seeing here is the kind of stuff you would find on um, the, the root of the Linux uh, file system. I'm not sure how this would be in other operating systems, so uh, please uh, adapt accordingly. Let's delete this. Uh, other interfaces that are powered by IDO are uh, the various uh, help uh, commands, Control H, F, Control H, V, and uh, the, the rest of them. Uh, again, uh, check my backlog. I have uh, some videos on the matter. These are very useful uh, tools for uh, finding hidden features, finding documentation, finding help, stuff that will be very difficult to access if you perform a search online, unless, of course, you are very lucky. But let's uh, move on with our demo because there are more stuff to showcase. Say now that I want to uh, I type in something and let's say now that uh, I want to confirm the thing I typed and then filter things further in, uh, in the list. So I have, uh, I have already typed IDO and I want to confirm this, set it in, uh, set it in and then re repeat another search. I do that by pressing control and space. So now the list is only matched to my previous search and I can search again. Let's search for something, let's search for, I don't know, map. And now it is producing everything that contained IDO, which, which I typed earlier, and now that contains map. This is very nice indeed. And of course I can find what I am interested in and it will produce, in this case, a buffer uh, with the help interface. Very nice indeed. Let's do this uh, again, control HV. Uh, now let's say that I am searching for, uh, let's type this again, and let's uh, say that now I want to do uh, a regular expression. I want to search for things that uh, match a regular expression instead of the flexible matching that I have here. Uh, by default, you can press control T and this will toggle uh, regular expression uh, matching. But because I want things to be consistent with iSearch, I have uh, mapped this same command to meta and uh, the letter R. Meta and R, if you know from iSearch, when you perform a regular iSearch, again, I have a video on the matter, when you perform a regular iSearch, meta and R will enable regular expressions. So I now can search for uh, things that uh, contain a regular expression. Let's say, uh, what should I search for? Let's say for something that contains setup and then uh, some more and then ends in something like this. Okay, so I have those things. Obviously, this is not necessarily a good example, but the point is that you can search using regular expressions. I don't script these videos, so some things may be uh, not as polished as they should be. But let's delete that and let's come back here again. The point is that you can toggle regular expressions at any moment using either control uh, T or meta and R in my case. Other things that you can do, you have already typed something and now you want to edit the thing that you have typed. By default, this is done with control and E. But again, to keep things consistent with iSearch, I have mapped this as well to meta and E. And now you can type uh, and you can use standard Emacs motions and type uh, something and again you can also use regular expressions and uh, do something like this because now I, I don't have regular expressions uh, toggled on it is not matching anything let's toggle them on real quick and again I see that now I am producing results using regular expressions so that's basically it with uh, IDO it's a very handy tool, a very convenient tool. Ah, just to show, just to show you something real quick. Uh, this is not specific to IDO, but it's something that is very useful indeed. Say that you are over a variable in this case, and you want to learn more about this. Control HV, and this already populates. You see it over here. IDO everywhere. It's exactly what I was. It already matches the thing at point, and you can learn all about it this way. And of course, you can use other commands as well, Control H F, Control H O, etc. Not to bother you too much about it. 
So uh, let me talk a bit now uh, that I showed the the basic things. You can find just to say that you can find more about it. I also have it here in my init. Control H F, and then Ido find file return. It, my computer is a bit slow. It's an underpowered piece of hardware, and because I am recording as well, so sorry about that. So what I just uh, showcased, Control H F, and then I find file return will produce a very helpful uh, buffer with all the key bindings uh, that you are probably interested in, such as the thing I showcased here: toggle regular expressions, toggle substring and prefix matching, which I didn't showcase. Uh, case sensitive case sensitive searching and things of that nature you should be uh, having a look at this uh, for sure it's very useful indeed not to bother you too much uh, with this let's remove this just to uh, conclude with a few words about my decision to switch away from the previous setup I had which was built around Ivy Ivy, of course, uh, uh, you are probably familiar with this, and if you check my backlog, you will see that I was using Ivy. Uh, Ivy, of course, is a fantastic piece of uh, so uh, fantastic piece of uh, functionality. It's a fantastic piece of software, uh, and it works. The great thing about it, and why I switched to it at the beginning, is because it works out of the box. So um, I started Emacs about two months ago, and uh, I configured Ido in the first days. But I didn't really like it at the beginning. I didn't know all these hidden features because I didn't know how to access the various help interfaces and things like that. So IDO was not very powerful. It didn't seem very good to me. It was. It's. It appeared to be very primitive, very rudimentary in what it could do. So I tried out Ivy, and Ivy out of the box offers all those uh, tools. What I showcased here, basically, Ivy does the same things. So I was like, okay, this is great. This is uh, clearly a superior uh, choice, a superior alternative. So I stayed with Ivy for uh, the last uh, two months or so. But uh, recently I was uh, reviewing the entirety of my init file based on the knowledge that I have accumulated thus far. And uh, in this process, I stumbled upon uh, the various uh, help interfaces for IDO and I decided to have another look at them. I decided to read the manual again on IDO and uh, I realized that it is uh, much more powerful than I had initially thought. So I decided to give it a second chance and I am uh, thoroughly impressed with it. And just to say that all this started because um, I didn't like, from the very beginning, I didn't like the default uh, interface that Ivy has, which is a vertical interface. So the one thing uh, uh, below each other. I didn't like that because uh, I cannot show it now. But basically, whenever I would type something, the mini buffer would expand somewhere over here. And it was very annoying. I like my mini buffer to be uh, where the mini buffer is. I don't want it to be at the half of my screen. I don't want it to occupy uh, this thing over here. I want it to be like this and I really like it that way. So uh, what I did is I went to the Ivy source code and I searched for all the instances of the new line character. If you don't know what the new line character is, just let's close this what is happening sorry the new line character is just to sh just to show you is this thing over here so i searched for this and i found the new line character scattered uh, throughout the ivy source code so i thought to myself this is not going to work uh, i thought that i could customize this and indeed i did customize it but it, it wasn't maintainable it was too fragile so i thought to myself let's search for an alternative Let's search for something that is uh, as good, that is like Ido, but uh, ju just, li just as powerful as Ivy. And my answer at the end of this uh, adventure is that Ido is, for my use case at least, just as powerful as Ivy, and in my uh, uh, opinion, uh, better suited to what I am doing. It is uh, more minimalist, it is uh, simpler, it is uh, just uh, stays over there and it is not 
um, creating all those things with interfaces moving in and out of my attention, uh, interfering with my uh, layout, with my windows over here. So basically that's all there is to it, folks. Uh, I am uh, very happy with IDO and I will uh, keep uh, using it uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, just, to just to say that I have um, a quite comprehensive uh, set of customizations related uh, to IDO. It's better that you check my init file, which I will link to in the description. And I always try to document uh, everything that I am doing so that you have a sense of how the various uh, configurations fit together. For example, uh, how the virtual buffers um, variable, which I didn't demo, how this uh, uh, interfaces, how it is interlinked with the recent F uh, command. But it's better that you see this uh, at your own pace rather than me uh, demoing uh, every nook and cranny, every little thing over here. Anyhow, uh, let's conclude this video. video. Thank you very much for your attention, folks. Uh, make sure uh, whenever you are doing something, make sure to be uh, mindful of it and uh, not to just install packages uh, without considering whether they truly are uh, an upgrade on what it is that you already have. Uh, that's all for now. Thank you very much for your attention, folks. Goodbye for now.